हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू न्यू लेक्चर ऑन ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ बिनाइन प्रोस्टेटिक हाइपरप्लेशिया सो बिनाइन प्रोस्टेटिक हाइपरप्लेशिया ट्रीटमेंट इट इज फर्स्ट बेस्ड इट कैन बी वन देर कैन बी एक्यूट रिटेंशन ऑफ यूरिन सो बिकॉज ऑफ बिनाइन प्रोस्टेटिक हाइपरप्लेशिया समटाइम्स देर कैन बी एक्यूट रिटेंशन ऑफ यूरिन वेन एवर देर इज एक्यूट रिटेंशन ऑफ यूरिन दिस कैन फॉर दैट यू विल हैव टू ड्रेन द ब्लैडर विथ अ कैथेटर यू विल जस्ट हैव टू पुट अ कैथेटर okay and you'll have to drain the urine so that is the main treatment for acute retention of urine if there is acute retention of urine just draining with a catheter okay so this is what we do for acute retention of urine next if there is chronic retention of urine then you will have to see the renal function if the renal function is good then you will have to just do the prostatectomy okay if there is uremic If the renal function is not done, then you will have to do the uh, urgent catheterization, remove the uh, urine. The back pressure of the urine should be removed, and then the kidney will have normal. You know, the the kidney can function normally. If the kidney functions normally, just remove the prostate. Prostate ectomy should be done, or else it's not necessary. So, for benign prostatic hyperplasia, before we do, we try all these. So only if it's acute, you will have to do a catheter and you will have to remove the uh, urine um, so that the pressure back pressure on the kidney will be decreased so normally bph it has two uh, treatments one there is conservative treatment and the second there can be surgical treatment okay conservative treatment it is based on uh, the symptoms so if the symptoms are mild and the flow rate urine flow rate is more than 10 per milliliter and if there is good bladder emptying so it is conservative if the we we go to conservative treatment if this is mild if the symptoms are mild and if urine flow rate is more than 10 per milliliter and there is good bladder emptying that is residual urine is less than 100 milliliters if residual urine is less than 100 ml then we will have to wait for 6 months and then you can repeat the investigation okay so while waiting for 6 months we can start him on drugs so we use two drugs one is alpha blockers are used these will block the alpha receptors and thus inhibit they will inhibit the alpha receptors and thus inhibit contraction of smooth muscle of uh, prostate okay contraction of smooth and thus inhibit contraction of smooth muscle of prostate whereas the second drug is 5 alpha reductase inhibitors okay so these 5 alpha reductase inhibitors they will inhibit uh, the enzyme 5 alpha reductase and thus there is Uh, no convert this 5 alpha reductase normally converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone but here whenever this enzyme is inhibited there is no conversion of this testosterone to dihydrotestosterone and thus there is no dihydrotestosterone and thus there is shrinkage of the gland okay so these are the different drugs which are used for benign prostatic hyperplasia now what are the surgeries which we can do the first surgery which is done is transurethral resection of prostate okay transurethral resection of prostate which is called as turp okay the surgery which we can do is transurethral resection of prostate here before we start the surgery we can give antibiotics okay when there is indwelling catheter or if there is recent urinary tract infections or where the and as there is chronic retention or any other factors we can give a uh, first antibiotics and then what we do in the surgery is just think that this is the penis this is the scrotum okay this is the urethra this is the urethra and this is the bladder okay so this is the uh, prostate okay now what we do is we introduce first a cystoscope into the bladder first we introduce a cystoscope into the bladder and after introducing the cystoscope into the bladder we give irrigations 
of glycine. So we give irrigation to glycine after passing strip cystoscope. We give irrigation to glycine, and then we will identify the prostate. So this prostate is identified, and then we resect the prostate using a small loop. A small loop from the prostate is resected. Okay, a loop using a loop or diathermy current. we resect this prostate as we are approaching the prostate to through the urethral route we call it transurethral resection of prostate so what are the complications of this transurethral resection of prostate one that is water intoxication with congestive cardiac failure because we are irrigating with lysine but if we have irrigate formerly they used to irrigate with saline or water during that time there is the water some of the fluid which is there here that is uh, absorbed into the blood stream and thus causing water intoxication along with congestive cardiac failure so that is terp syndrome and there is also hyponatremia because there is increased water obviously relatively sodium is less so relative sodium is decreased so there is hyponatremia okay and there can be infections can be there during this procedure and hemorrhage can be there during the procedure and sometimes urinary incontinence can occur sometimes there can be perforation of bladder perforation of urethra because we are introducing cystoscope sometimes bad instrumental technique that can cause perforation to bladder or perforation to urethra there can be stricture urethra and retrograde ejaculation impotence must be there may be there and sometimes it can cause recurrence so these are the different uh, post operative complications then major advantage is there is no suprapubic incision is required okay so this is about the uh, transurethral resection of prostate now the second this is the transurethral resection of prostate the second technique which can be used is frayers suprapubic trans vesical prostatectomy okay frayers supra pubic trans vesical prostatectomy here what are we going to do if this is the penis scrotum and this is the urethra prostate and this is the bladder okay, this is the abdominal wall now uh this is now what we do is frayer supra pubic if this is the pubic bone pubis bone now we pass a uh, um we will first make a supra pubic incision okay just above the pubis bone we make an incision and then we will open the bladder and then we will reach urethra okay and then we will pass a tube and we will uh, enucleate the prostate the prostate is enucleated and removed so because we are approaching it through the supra pubic route and through transvesically by cut by incising the bladder we call it as supra pubic transvesical prostatectomy it is named after frayer so it is frayer supra pubic transvesical prostatectomy and the other disease is so sorry and the other approach is millis retropubic prostatectomy okay what do we do in millis retropubic prostatectomy if this is the uh, penis this is the scrotum and this is the urethra Mm, prostate and this is the bladder here this is the pubis so we are starting it just below the pubic pubic bone so we approach it through the pubic bone so we make fanon steel incision here we make a fanon steel incision and then we don't open the bladder we directly go to the prostate and we will from from behind the pubic bone we will go to the prostate and we will do diathermy to the prostate so this is mellis retropubic prostatectomy where we are not opening the bladder we are going back the I mean behind the pubic bone and we are just diathermy cauterizing the uh, prostate so this is mellis retropubic prostatectomy so these are the different structure different uh, approaches there is one more approach which is called as youngs perineal prostatectomy the other approach is youngs perineal 
prostatectomy this young's perineal prostatectomy is not used now but here what we do is we approach the prostate from the perineum so if you think this is the perineum we will just uh, cut the perineum and then we will approach we will incise the perineum and we will approach it through the perineum okay so these are the different techniques which are available for uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia so thank you guys for watching my lecture in my next class we will we will, i will explain about the prostatic carcinoma thank you for watching my lecture if you have any doubts please comment it in the comment section if you feel something is inadequate in this lecture even then comment it in the comment section thank you for watching my lecture thank you